Thinking about taking your GoPro Hero 9 scuba diving? Here's everything you need to know. Hi guys, Chris from Stoke Travel here, or welcome back to the channel. Now before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any video goodness. Now today we're going to be talking about the GoPro Hero 9, or more importantly, taking your Hero 9 scuba diving. Uh, and I've been taking my GoPro all over the world. It's helped me capture some incredible underwater footage, sharks, turtles, schools of fish, coral gardens, and more. And the GoPro Hero 9 is definitely the best GoPro for scuba diving, for sure. Today, we're gonna to be talking through everything you need to know about scuba diving with your Hero 9, uh, from the best gear to kit it up with, filters, uh, through to video and photo settings as well. So if you're gonna be hitting the water soon, this one's for you. Okay, so first off, let's talk through dive housings, which is probably the most important part of taking your Hero 9 scuba diving. And the Hero 9, like the Hero 7 and 8, is waterproof without a case. However, this is limited to 10 meters of depth. So if you're kind of surfing or snorkeling, it's absolutely fine. But if you're gonna be going scuba diving, like depths of like 10 meters and down, usually about 18 meters if you're open water certified, you're gonna need something a bit more hardcore to protect your Hero 9. Uh, now this is where the dive housing comes in, AKA the GoPro Super Suit. Uh, there are some third party options out there. Personally, I always stick with the GoPro dive housing. It's been super reliable and obviously it's made by GoPro, so you would have thought it would do the job a little bit better. Um, now the super suit housing will protect your camera to up to 40 meters. So for any recreational divers out there, this is more than enough. Um, it's pretty easy to use. You just clip it open like this and then your GoPro sits quite nicely inside. Uh, now, unlike the Hero 8, you don't have to take the lens cover off to be able to put it into the super suit, which is great. makes it really nice and quick. Uh, one of the things I do want to flag up here now is once you have your Hero 9 in the super suit, you don't have access to any of the back screen controls. So you will need to set your video and photo settings before you load it in and before you hit the water. Uh, you can obviously turn it on and off with the side button and also switch through the modes from like time-lapse, video and photo, but you won't have access to those settings. Uh, we're going to talk through those a bit uh, in a bit anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's the Hero 9 Super Suit, which is a must if you're going to take it scuba diving. Okay, so the next piece of kit we're going to talk about are filters. Um, now the GoPro is great underwater and the Hero 9 for scuba diving is pretty epic. The auto white balance option is amazing and much improved over the previous GoPro models. Uh, so you're not going to get as much of a color cast as you would do on older versions of the GoPro. Uh, if you've seen some videos out there, you'll see they're very greeny and bluey in tint and that's because of the auto white balance adjustment. Uh, as you should know from your scuba diving training, um, as you go from about five meters down, the color red disappears in the light spectrum, which is why things appear quite green and bluish underwater. Uh, now you can get a whole heap of GoPro uh, filters for your dive housing. Uh, Polar Pro do an amazing one. There's a link in the description below. Uh, but they're really nice and easy to use. Once you're underwater, descend. When you get to about five meters, they just clip in on the front of your super suit housing and you carry on as normal. There's no need to change anything else in your settings. You just need to clip it on and off once you get to about that five meters of depth. Uh, if you are serious about taking your Hero 9 scuba diving, this is something I definitely recommend as it is really gonna boost the colors in your final footage and take away a lot of post-processing editing as well. And um, so yeah, if you are snorkeling as well, you can get um, lighter tinted red ones that will kind of boost the colors in kind of shallower depths. Um, and if you're diving in cold or fresh water where it's a more of a greeny tint, uh, you can get magenta color filters as well for that. But plenty of filters are out there that are really easy to use. Uh, link in the description below to all the gear that I've mentioned in this guide. But yeah, red filter is a must for me. Now the final piece of your Hero 9 scuba diving kit is going to be the handle. Uh, and this is often overlooked, but also pretty important. So your choice in this is going to really help make your life a lot easier. Um, I've gone through quite a few poles over the years um, and they've succumbed to like rust or they've broken or they've just been really badly made. In actual fact, this is probably one of the cheapest handles I've bought. It's about 25 US dollars. I've grabbed it off of Amazon. Again, there's a link in the description below so you can grab one of these. Uh, but this has really lasted quite a long time. This is going on kind of three years now. Um, the thing I love about this, it's metal, so it's really robust and you can extend it. 
uh, which is obviously great. So you can kind of have your kind of selfie stick going, you can have it kind of packed down away. If you want to tuck it into your BCD for kind of ascending or descending, or if you just don't want to use your camera for a bit, you can tuck it away and not worry about it. Uh, that extra bit of length as well means you don't have to get as close to kind of corals and things. So if your buoyancy is not great, you've got that kind of bit of a safety net of distance between you and what you're filming. Uh, this one's really good, as you can tell. I've actually got some scratches on there. It actually survived a bit of a, a, a curious reef shark when I was up in Cairns a few weeks ago, uh, which decided to give it a nibble. And it survived that. So like, really, what more am I going to be putting it through? Um, a lot of people kind of want to go diving with the floaty handle, uh, super popular to dive with. But from my experience, it's not great. It's designed to float and you're going scuba diving. So you're going to want to go down and this is going to want to go up. Uh, so I'd go with something that's kind of pretty neutrally buoyant like this. Uh, the other good thing is it's got this kind of bit of a lanyard at the bottom. So you can kind of put it around your wrist just as a bit of safety. Uh, if you do want to kind of tuck it away a little bit more, you can kind of put a carabiner clip on. So it'll clip onto your BCD while you tuck it away as well. Uh, personally, I've never really dropped one. I have found a couple while scuba diving, so make sure you keep hold of them um, and make sure they're tucked securely into your BCD when you're scuba diving. But yeah, that's the handle. Really good, really nice, cheap option there, uh, which is always good. Um, but yeah, this one will do the job and is one that I recommend. Okay, so let's get into the tech side of things a bit more and run through the settings that I personally use for all of my scuba diving footage. Um, so you can set up your camera and it's all good to go. Uh, now when it comes to video, I either shoot in 2.7K or 4K, depending on what I need to be using the footage for. For most people, 2.7 is more than enough and really nice and easy to edit. Uh, 4K obviously gives you that bit of boost in resolution. Um, but then I also have the frame rate at 60 frames a second in either of those. That gives you the option to slow things down two times, uh, which kind of gives you that nice kind of silky slow-mo footage, which I really enjoy. Um, you can obviously, if you hit 2.7K, you can kind of bump it up to 120 frames per second. Personally, I don't think you really need to slow down dive footage much more than kind of half speed, but it's personal preference and it depends on how you want to edit things up. Uh, when it comes to 5K, personally, I find it really slow to edit, so I'm not shooting with 5K, but if you do need that extra bump in resolution, that is an option. And that of 5K obviously allows you to take uh, full resolution screen grabs uh, if you do want to take images from it as well. Just be aware you can't change the battery while you're diving, obviously. So shooting things like 5K can kind of drain the battery a lot more. So 2.7K or 4K is my go-to. Uh, when it comes to field of vision, I go with wide. I find that's just the most robust kind of lens field of vision for diving. It allows me to get those kind of more panoramic shots. And then I get in a bit closer if I do need to film kind of animals or marine life. Again, don't get too close to stuff when you're filming. They are wild animals at the end of the day. Give them their space. Uh, but that wide angle I find works quite nicely. Um, I also have hyper smooth on, uh, which is one of the main reasons I love filming with the GoPro because it's like really nice and smooth, even handheld. Uh, when it comes to pro tune settings, EV I have at minus 0.5. So just knock it down just a little bit and underexpose your uh, video, which I find works best for me. Um, I then have ISO minimum at 100. And then most importantly as well, ISO at maximum 400. If you push your ISO higher than that, it can kind of get quite grainy. Um, so I limit mine to 400 and it works really nice. Obviously, if you are shooting in lower light conditions, you might want to push that a little bit more. But if you're shooting kind of nice, bright, clear water, say the Maldives or Australia, 400 is more than enough. Um, and then sharpness, I have at the highest sharpness rate. And I also use GoPro color. Uh, if you do want to go flat color palette, uh, if you want to add on kind of filters and things and uh, that in your post processing, the flat tone color is a good way to start as well. But those are my video settings for Hero 9 scuba diving. Now, alongside the video settings, I know a lot of you be going to be using your Hero 9 for scuba diving and taking pictures with it as well. Uh, now, photo settings, I use my ProTune the same as I do with the video settings, um, but I still have it on a wide angle single image. Um, on the Hero 9, I've also found that the super photo mode works really well, but it does need to be uh, quite bright conditions for that to be optimal. So just be aware of that. And uh, now time lapse is my other go to mode when uh, scuba diving with my GoPro. I have this set up at 0.5 second intervals, which is great for kind of taking a lot of photos. If like things are moving towards you and you don't want to be keep pressing that button, you can kind of just press the button, hold the pole out and follow what you're kind of taking pictures of. It's also great for selfies as well. You can just hit the button, extend the pole, 
pull that out in front of you and you'll get a couple of extra shots in there as well. Does mean there's a little bit more when it comes to editing at the end of the day, because obviously you're gonna get quite a lot of shots, but it means you've got a lot more to choose from as well. So those are the kind of three things I've got set up before I go scuba diving. So my videos all set up at 4K at 60, uh, my photo mode is just single shot, and then the time-lapse mode for those kind of selfies and burst shots as well. But yeah, those are my three settings for scuba diving with the Hero 9. And there you have it guys, that's my full guide to taking your Hero 9 scuba diving. And now if you're looking for some more GoPro hints and tips and guides, make sure you check out the links in the description below to all my GoPro guides. Of course, check out the rest of my YouTube channel for heaps of awesome videos and hints and tips as well. That's it for this week, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week.